Hello and welcome to another edition of Capital Market Live on Channels Television. I'm Will Ibang here in Lagos. First, let's dive into the markets. We start with Europe, where stocks pulled back on Friday as concerns persisted about the spread of the Omicron COVID-19 variant and the inflation outlook. The German DAX dipped by 0.67%. The FTSE 100 dropped, traded higher instead by 0.13%, while the French CAC 40 fell by 1.12% to close on Friday. European stocks have all all but giving back Thursday's gains when investors reacted positively to central bank policy decisions. The Federal Reserve on Wednesday announced that it would be aggressive on tapering bond purchases and seize several rate hikes in 2022. The Bank of England followed suit by hiking interest rates for the first time since the start of the pandemic, citing a strong labor market and the need to return inflation towards its 2% target. November's reading came in at a 10-year high of 5.1% annually. The European Central Bank struck a more tone for the cutting its pandemic era bond buying program but vowing to stay accommodative through 2022 and beyond. Now to Asia, where stocks traded mostly lower on Friday following overnight losses on Wall Street as investors assessed monetary policy decisions from two key central banks. Japan's Nikkei 225 fell 1.79%. Chinese mainland shares also tumbled with the Shanghai Composite falling 1.16% in Hong Kong. The Hang Seng Index tumbled 1.2% to close on Friday. Now to the U.S. markets, where stocks came under pressure again in Friday's volatile session amid worries about tighter monetary policy and the ongoing pandemic, leading to a losing week for the major averages. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped about 1.5 percent. The S&P 500 fell 1.03 percent, while the tech-heavy Nasdaq Composite ended the session less than 0.1 percent. The major averages posted a negative week with the Nasdaq being the biggest loser. The tech-heavy benchmark declined nearly 3%, while the Dow and the S&P 500 slipped 1.7% at 1.9% each. Now back home, local stocks closed in the green territory. Despite profit-taking activities, the all-share index ended the week 1.1% higher to settle at 42,353.31 points, spurred by gains in MTN Nigeria, Dangote Sugar, Total Energies, and Dangote Cement. However, activity levels were weaker than the prior week as trading volumes and value decreased by 49.7% and 42.9% each, week on week. Sectoral performance was weak as only the banking and oil and gas indexes declined. Market breadth was positive this week as 32 equities appreciated in price. Maya PLC topped the price chart for 31 other advances, while Champion Breweries led the 27 other decliners. The trio of FBN Holdings, International Breweries and Access Bank contributed 35.68% and 27.2% to the total volume and value of shares traded in the week. Similarly, activities at the unlisted securities market closed positive this week as both the NASD OTC Security Index and market cap rose by 1.06%. 6.41 billion naira was added to the market value to close at 611.29 billion naira this week. Total volume of securities traded fell by about 84% to 1.02 million units of shares traded, while value also dipped by about 73% to 41.98 million naira and executed in just 20 deals. Central Securities Clearing System PLC and NASD PLC topped this week's trade by volume while Priceland Campina Wamco Nigeria PLC occupied the top spot on the gainers chart. Meanwhile, the share price of Central Securities Clearing System PLC fell by 4.23% to close 17 Naira in the week. Now to the fixed income markets where stocks, the, the local bond market was mostly tepid this week with minimal volumes traded across board at the close of trading on Friday. The bears dominated the market with sell pressure majorly at the short end of the curve. Overall average benchmark yields closed at 8.11%, indicating a week-on-week -week rise of 0.84%. The Treasury bills market started the week on a quiet note with minimal volumes. Trade across board as attention was directed towards the primary market auction that held in the week. At the close of trading on Friday, the market was bullish with solid interest seen across all bills. Average benchmark yields for Treasury bills fell by 0.22%. Yields on the OMO bills fell by 0.55%, while CBN special bills dipped by 2.47%. 
Now we know that the DMO offered and sold 5.86 billion now worth of notes at its Treasury bills auction this week. The 91-day paper and the 182-day paper and the 364-day paper were allotted at 2.5%, 3.45%, and 5% respectively. When compared to the previous auction, rates on the 91-day and the 182-day paper were unchanged, while the 364-day paper fell by 34 basis points. Now, joining me in the studio to dissect the latest ev events in the capital market is Mr. Abel Ezekiel, investment and portfolio analyst. Hello and welcome to the program. Thank you Thanks for, for joining me. me. Thank you very much. Good evening. Now, Mr. Ezekiel, we yes. see that the capital market is performing not so great as mm. we expected. Mm. How would you assess the performance this week? The equities? Uh, it is mixed. It is mixed. And uh, sincerely, the activities, as you have rightly highlighted, uh, sometimes some of, we, we should expect something better than what we are having, considering the fact that uh, this is the last quarter of the year. <clears throat> so definitely we expect some kind of activities. If not for the price movement we recorded in the highest cap or high cap of uh, MTN, MTN gained about 7% in the week. And that good cement definitely will really have some lackluster performance, as it were. And uh, I would say maybe we'll discuss this in, more, in a further detail. But I think uh, activities within the primary market or within the IPO, the IPO of MTN is actually taking people's attention away from this secondary market, as it were, into participating in that offer. Now, speaking of, speaking of MTN, yes. MTN Nigeria is still making the news and it's yes. because it's following its public offer. And it's, it trailed, you know, the, blazed the trail as the first digitized public offer made to Nigerians. That's so true. what would you say? What are the benefits? What's the impact of this uh, digital platform? Mm -hmm. what, does it, what does it portend for the market? Exactly. exactly. Uh, it, is, it is really because of the status of the company involved, as we're talking about here. They've not done a public offer before. This is really a kind of a, a situation whereby the company now decided on its own that they, just, they do, they call this democrat, democratize the shareholding of MTN by offering to the public. Meaning a 20 unit, which to the best of my knowledge, I don't think, I can't remember when a company come up with that kind of a number of shares with below 4,000 naira, would be a particular. And we, let us, Look at the pedigree of this company we're talking about here. This is a company that, from record, so far, they have paid over 2.3 trillion in, in dividend. They were listed in May 2019 at 90 Naira. They listed about 20.3 billion shares. As at that point, it was about 1.8 trillion. Between that time, last year, 2020, they closed at 169. At a point in this year, they moved to about 209.9. What does that tell you? That's about 130 percent return from that 90 to there's a two now. For now, as we speak, it says 187 naira, while the offer is about 169. But by the time you compare it, or by the time it adds to the incentive added to it of one for 20, for my calculation, you now find out that uh, you will be making a margin of about 15 percent, which is more, which is a yield that is better than what you have in the treasury bill bond, bond and the rest of them. In fact, that is a return that is commensurate with current it, uh, inflation rate. Inflation rate, as we speak, is about 15.4. So, so to an extent, if you have this MTN, you are as good as saying that you are targeting the inflation rate in the economy, as it were. <laughs> but remember, they put a caveat. That is to say you must hold that shares for the next one year. You will not sell within 12 months. So for me, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. So we'll see how the market responds. Really? Because what we have now, as it is now, we have a kind of, a, a kind of a, a, what is it called, a, a arbitrage in the system, mm -hmm. where you have a, the share being traded at 187, mm -hmm. and public offer arbitrage at 169. 
what stops me from trading if I have an existing shareholder of trading it or right here and coming to be speak it up about sixty nine? <laughs> Definitely. That is that, 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 that is something we will watch out for and exactly. see, but it's probably beneficial for some people. Exactly. Um but looking at the growth trajectory of MT and mm. it was, uh, in terms of how far they've come, you mm. know, if you said mentioned the two thousand and nineteen since they were listed mm. on the exchange. Now MTN is one of the successful bidders yes. as one. Well, well, it's one of the bidders that won the, the bid to, exactly. you know, to, to obtain the 5G license, to deploy yes. the 5G network in Nigeria. Yes. Now, how do you, what does this mean for the future of MTN in Nigeria mm. with, 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 and potential investors? Uh, let, you do, uh, let me let, let be frank. 5G is really the big deal, as it were. It's what it does for you faster internet, data latency, so much that benefit. I can tell you that it is a more or less like the focus or the direction where, because if you look at technology and the rest of them, and even before now, they want a payment service bank, PSB. So all these things go a long way. They've not gotten all these things and we are where we are now. But with this new kind of incentive that have been added to MTA, MTA will go places in the nearest future, because that will add value to the bottom line, as it were. Remember that 2019, they pay about seven naira there about. Last year, they pay about nine naira for the cover and there. So moving forward as well, with this 5G, it's more like a, a limitless opportunity, and which will, to an extent, reflect in the bottom line. And remember as well, MTN, they pay about 80%. PR ratio, as in declare dividend, for example, they play, they, let's say they declare one hour dividend, they pay about 80 kobo out of the INA because mm -hmm. for me, it's a cash cow, so to speak. This is a company, a, a, an organization that have about, but it's today to about 72 million subscriber base. You understand? I don't know any other organization. It is only bank, like uh, Vault Bank, kind of, uh, I mean, the, the, the customer of Vault Bank or depositor of Vault Bank is an average of about 31 million, which is not. A far cry from what MT is parading. So it's a big company that have come to bed. And remember, the, the parent company, they, they are planning, they are plan to reduce their holding okay. from about 78.8% mm. to about 65, to 65 yes. as time goes on. Mm. So it, it's, it's a company that have come, and you know, this is the biggest market for them. We have about over 200 million Nigerians. Everybody must, must talk, you must do one thing or the other with phone. If you don't do phone call, you do data, you do internet. So you, you, know? you don't think it's a risky um, investment yeah. or, or, or venture for them to give up more of their stake in the company? It's not, it, I, I, I will not say because there's nothing that has no risk in itself. The only risk will be that, okay, for instance, which they have overcome. Remember 2010 to 2015, they ran into regulating murky waters of uh, deleting or not deleting of on, on, on registered uh, whatever, where they were slammed almost $5.2 billion fine, which was negotiated to $3.2 billion, mm -hmm. amounting to about $330 billion, which they fully paid as of 2019, during that listing period. In fact, that's really what support the company. Was, okay, let's all even release this company, let's all even put this company in the hand of Nigeria, so that people will not perceive that this company is not our own. Definitely, as it stand down, they have now put it back because it is a company that have come to stay, you know, into the hand of Nigeria. So now, definitely, I don't see any serious risk. Speaking of still the, what's happening in the capital markets and the equities market, we see that NEM Insurance is also undergoing a share reconstruction to increase its nominal value, mm. nominal share value from 50 kobo to one naira. Um, and the, what's the reason behind <laughs> this? What's really driving this? Are they trying to step up to the big guys and the, the play with the big guys? What, what's really happening there? Uh, We've been seeing the concern of shares. The last one we saw in the insurance sector was Lasaco Assurance. Masa, as a Masa has done his own. Before now, that company had done their own. But nobody has touched its nominal share capital, or nominal value. This is the first time we have seen insurance moving from 50 cobo to one naira. That is to say, okay, the share capital of NM is 5.2 billion, let's say above, above 5 billion share. Now, 50 cobo of 10 billion, meaning the, the share, nominal share is 10 billion. 
at 50 core, give you 5 billion. Now they want to reduce, they want to bring it down to 5 billion. The reason behind some of these things is to say, okay, the fewer, the better in terms of dividend payout. So for me, the bottom line is, does that translate to your earnings? Does that give you a better earning? We have company, okay, for at least MTN, we're even talking about the minimum value is about two couple, uh, about two couple, the minimum, and they are trading about 187 couple. So we what, have uh, 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 Airtel, it's about one dollar. It's saying about nine hundred naira. We have uh, Nestle, it's about fifty coins. It's saying at one thousand five hundred naira. So, <laughs> so, so the, really the, the, the the issue for me is not your nominal. nominal value. They know the reason for this. Uh, this thing. If that can translate, God, what will happen? If you if you look at it, they mm -hmm. will lift. It's already on technical suspension as mm -hmm. the full suspension. Yes. It will be listed back, I think, on the 23rd of this month okay. at a particular price. I'm speculating now. They will put the price. So if at that point, let okay. us see if there are any who support, I mean, will support the price at that Very point well. in time. We'll just continue. Just hold your thoughts. We'll continue this Thank conversation you. just right after Thank the break. You. We'll take a short break now. And when we come back, we'll continue the conversation. And that's in a moment. Do stay with us. This is Capital Markets. Hello and welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Capital Market Live on Channels Television. Now, during the week, or while some companies are reconstructing their shares, others are listing. Now, during the week, precisely on Friday, the Global Resources PLC listed by introduction 91 million units of its shares on the NGS Growth Board. And that is at the close of the bell yesterday. Now, let's take a quick look. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to today's closing gong ceremony to commemorate the listing of 91 million ordinary shares of Ronches Global Resources PLC on the growth board of the Nigerian Exchange Limited. Hereby bring the market to the Thank you. Now, Mr. Ezekiel, we can see the bells uh, closing there. That's signaling the welcoming of Ranches Global Resources onto the NGX growth yeah. board. Now, what, and that's the final listing of the NGX for the year. That's, they're not listing any other company for the okay. year. So, okay. But it is the, it's the first, it's an opportunity for Ranches to yeah, play that. on a bigger playing platform. field yeah. platform. So what value? Um, branches global resources. Not a lot of people have heard about them. But what value do you think they can bring to the market? Well, uh, M I mean, uh, NGX, they are in their wisdom, or let, let me put it uh, as a stand. They, they list their own chairs on this growth board. Remember, growth board is what we used to know as a yesterday or last year as alternative security market, ASM. Before then, it used to be seen as second tier market, which is meant for company with lower or that has a, a kind of a, a, a lower kind of a share capital, or of which they will give them a kind of a, a lower charges to be paid. Now, what would they bring? The company, from available information, they are into logistics, control, uh, road construction, and uh, uh, what's it called uh, traffic uh, lights and all those stuff, airport market and the rest of them. Now, what NGS has done for them is to bring them to that kind of uh, visibility for them to, uh, which is really what the global is all about for Nigerian companies and maybe a foreign company as it were, for you to come and really showcase yourself. And to, 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 at, as it stands now, it was listed at a price of 81 naira. Now, that's a huge amount to get visibility on there. Exactly. I think, are they not big enough for 81 naira? I think that's a big number. It's a big one. That's so a big number. Definitely, for me, it's more like uh, putting the challenge on their hand for them to justify this price, as it were. Because a, a, a company of 81 naira, at that price, it means, for me, because if you look at the growth board, growth board will have about when it was created last year, we have about four companies. You have uh, uh, MC Nichols on it. You have a uh, Ram on it. Few other uh, uh, Livingstone uh, Microfinance Bank plus other companies like that. So, and there's none of them among those companies on that group board. 
that's even, I would say it's 10 Naira. Now we are talking of this one that is about 81 Naira. Definitely, it's, I, I, I feel angels in this freedom is giving them that opportunity to, to now really prove what they have to offer in terms of performance because being listed is one thing, justifying, because it's a question of ability to be able to come out with good earnings. Your bottom line, for crying out loud, it is what you dish out to investors that will carry the at the end of the day. It's not, nobody is there as a fellow criminal. Nobody is there to throw money around. So definitely, it's an opportunity for them to really, because I felt those things they are, they, they are into, if you look at legal for instance, legal is, you know, is having issue of traffic congestion and the rest of them. So it's an avenue for them to showcase and to come up with innovation, innovation that can even mitigate or reduce this traffic crisis we are having within this city. So to an extent, it's more like giving the avenue to showcase what they have to offer moving forward. I think that is what NGS in its wisdom wanted to do, give them that visibility Oh, yeah, come, showcase what you have to offer. Let us see how you go from here. Oh, let's just move slightly away from the NGF and to the SEC, that's the regulatory body of this government, so that during the week they announced a 0.025% fee that they're going to commence in January yeah. to charge on fixed income uh, transactions, particularly the bond transactions mm. in the secondary market. Now, how specifically do you think, why now? Why at this mm. time? It's, uh, it's, it's interesting. Because you, for me, I have not been, I have not come across the charging of all those charges on fixed income bond. In, you know, bond to an extent is more or less like a loan or a kind of an alternative to the stock market, equity market, whereby if you don't want to be exposed to the normal uncertainty that is associated with the stock market, you now move to the other bond market, whereby you are sure of your return, fixed mm -hmm. return, mm -hmm. then you are sure of your initial capital, which is more or less where a pension, bo uh, bo uh, pension offices, insurance company, that main fund, you know, where they put their money. Because for instance now, most of the money, they, I mean, most of that, in that platform is mostly pension that actually, but not a platform so much because after retirement, people will really want to be sure of what they are going to get at the end of the day. So, it's so is this not going to be more burden on investors? To an we... extent, uh, to an extent, as it were. I, I, I think, I think, SEC in its wisdom, they just maybe they sat down, they look at because of the way. If you look at, even based on what you have read, what you read now, the performance within the week, as in activities for stock market within the week. From uh, 49 to 47, uh, 49 in uh, what's it called? Uh, in uh, uh, volume and value time drop compared with last week. Mm -hmm. And with this coronavirus, of it, it's affecting the income generation capacity of SEC. Yes, okay. So I think they just think outside the box okay. to look for avenue, which of which they, are, they have okay. enabling law that is backing them okay. to charge or to leave money internally to cover some of their, because they, they are coming up with a lot of innovation. Okay. For instance, recently they come up with the issue of uh, identity management to track or to resolve so, this on pay dividend so, thing. So just tell us quickly, how will the fee be applied so people know how this will be applicable to them? Yes, I think uh, uh, the detail will still be worked out, but I think as a, at the point of a trial is done, Definitely, because the fee is not applicable to only SEC, it's applicable to the exchange, mm -hmm. it's app uh, uh, even the broker itself has about 0 0.0001. At the end of the day, it's almost like the normal thing that is done in, fee, uh, in, a, in a quit market. Uh, when a trial is done, they look at the value, they apply those charges, then they will nail it off from the final amount that we're giving to the investor at the end of the day, when it's going out of that position by the time it's you know, withdraw or is good, is, uh, the, the mat it get to maturity at okay. where. Okay, so we just go to quickly just talk about what's in the rave now, hold, holding companies. Yeah. We've seen Sterling Bank, Access Bank, <laughs> you know, vying for this holding company position. So why, what, what's really driving this? What's, what's with the hold call? What's uh, the rave there about There's a this? little story behind it, okay. you understand? What happened is that before now, uh, let's say in early, let's say 2000, before the or or, be, or uh, back, bank operates merchant bank and commercial bank. El, bef, until about 2005, when bank consolidation came up, whereby 
it was thrown open that to say, okay, you can do anything under the sun, universal banking. At, that was when the capitalization was increased from 5 billion to about 25 billion. Fine, at the end of the day, those merchant banks, some of them converted, that's where you have FCMB, you know, uh, they are all, some of them were merchant bank, they converted to commercial bank. So until another era came in to CBN, whereby they said, okay, you cannot be a father, you cannot do everything, or, 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 if you want to do merchant bank, do merchant bank, you know, that kind of thing, until recent. So what is leading to this holding company is, is when our bank just thought of it that, okay, Based on CBA, we don't want to flout CBA rule. For us to take advantage of inherent opportunity in the system, for us not to be not to be cut off, for us to maybe take advantage of maybe we have insurance unit, we have a building unit, we have a the, the normal banking unit, you know those, 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 all those kind of things. So the the, the idea came okay, have a hold, holding company kind of a thing that you can form all this one become your subsidiary. Then you generate income here, you generate income here, generate income here. At the end of the day, you know, it will support the earnings of the holding company. So in the wrapping it up, we'll just say that there are many possibilities and uh, opportunities having a holding company. There are, there are, there are. Many thanks, uh, are. Mr. Ezekiel. This has been a lovely conversation. Mr. Simple. Ezekiel, Abel Ezekiel is an investment and portfolio analyst. Thank Simple. you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And Simple. that's a wrap on the program. Don't forget to join us same time next week. I'm Will Ibong, and thanks for watching, and stay safe. <laughs>